Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you have been on my YouTube channel before, you'll know what kind of videos I make. And this video is about my dependency or addiction to a painkiller, a uh, narcotic called morphine, which pretty much everyone in the world would have heard of because a lot of other drugs are derived from morphine, such as opium. Uh, morphine is a opiate and I uh agonist and it dulls pain I should say kills pain but it doesn't actually kill the pain completely there's still a little bit of pain there but it dulls pain serious pain it's meant for medium to serious uh, pain and I have pain my rib cage just there, yeah, it's all around that area there. I feel it just from down there. When I went to the doctor and pressed it, and he pressed it, it really, really quite hard. It really hurt, and I, I, I got, I can feel it again now because I took the morphine about eleven, and now it's twenty to seven in the morning. It's coming back again. So I need to. Just put out of it now because I've taken my whole dose of 80 milligrams and I get 10 milligram tablets of the Zomorph which look, which look like these Zomorph 10 milligrams and they're capsules I get two boxes of 60 so I get 120 capsules each month and I never take more than I'm meant to. I always take what I'm prescribed. And I'm also on other prescription drugs at the same time, if you didn't know. Such as Diazepam, which is Valium, and Zopoclone, which is Lunesta in the United States. And Quetiapin, which I've got schizopanoid schizophrenia. Quetiapin is Seroquel in well it's just Seroquel is a generic name and Quetiapin is the trade name and basically the morphine it, it has led to a at least a psych psychological dependency I think it might have led to a physical one as well but we'll have to see when I start coming off it We'll see if it's a physical dependency. I have been on it for two months, so it is quite likely to be every day. I mean, for two months, and it's going to it's going to be three months because I've uh, got the the boxes that I just showed you. And in fact, well, they're yeah, not the boxes that I take because they're my spare ones. I've got a few in there, but not many. That there's probably two or three blister strips between the two boxes I've, I should have really put them all in one box and chucked the other box out but I haven't got around to it yet I might want to do that after this video that's reminded me uh, thanks for making me want to make this video people you've helped me out yeah so I do recommend morphine as a painkiller but the side effects can include drowsiness, euphoria, which is good, contentment, which is also good. Makes you feel like you don't want to be anywhere else and where you are is where you're meant to be and you don't really want to move anywhere, which is really good. And yeah, you're just a lot more relaxed and you, you sleep better it makes you really drowsy like I think I said that straight away and maybe it makes your memory a bit worse I can't remember it, if it's the diazepam that's making my memory worse because I'm 30 milligrams a day of Valium 
or dies in Japan, as it's also known as. And uh, soccer cologne can make your memory wiped, but I, I haven't, I don't take that until just before I go to sleep every day. At the moment, my sleeping pattern is quite messed up. I'm staying up all night. Uh, hint, hint, if you want to add me to Facebook, please do. I'll speak to you in the night. I'll even phone you up if you want, so I get free calls to landlines and mobiles from my phone. Free text as well, and two gig of data. Virgin Media, that is. Virgin Mobile, £15 a month. It's a bargain, to be honest. No phone, but obviously I've got a SIM card from Virgin, but I had a SIM card anyway, and they just converted it into a uh, contract SIM card, set up a direct debit, and away we go. Yeah, so that's about my phone, which is off topic. Sorry about that, people. <clears throat> and on topic is morphine. Uh, it is very addictive and it will lead to side effects. It's inevitable really that you're going to get side effects from such a, a drug. The thing is though with the, with the tablets, the bioavailability, which, which means how much of the drug can be metabolised by the liver, is quite low, so you need quite a lot of milligrams to have a good effect in dulling the pain from taking morphine of any kind. I mean, any kind of tablet or uh, capsule. I don't mean I intervene intravenous. If you inject it into a vein, it is a very strong drug. It's, strong, it's pretty much as strong as heroin, injecting heroin. So you get an idea of how strong it is if you inject it. And obviously you, you can't inject capsules. <laughs> so, uh, it ain't worth thinking about. <clears throat> I would only go on morphine if you really need it. Such as chronic pain, acute pain and serious pain that this won't shift if you have pain that will shift eventually go on something like dihydrocodine which is known as df 118 of df or dhc and this will be a much more suitable medication for you i will i would imagine and it is weaker than morphine, obviously, but it's a step down. In the UK, we we don't have a drug with, between dihydrocodine and morphine. In the US, you have Vicodin, which is V1, which is six in Roman numerals, and that is six times stronger than codeine, which is our base, like the base uh, opiate, technically it's an opiate, and we also have tramadol, which is like an opiate. It isn't exactly an opiate, technically, but it has opiate-like effects. So this might also be one to consider. Although to me, it made me really paranoid somehow. And what uh, tramadol did, codeine worked for me. So did dihydrocodeine. Morphine works for me. Oxycodone works for me. And I think I, I think I'm missing one out here. I can't remember what it is. Don't know. I'll come back. I'll write it in. The, I'll write it in a comment if I remember which one I forgot. So I've been on more than codeine, dihydrocodeine, morphine, and oxycodone. I'm sure I've been on one more than that. Oh, sorry, my mon my monitor's gone off. It might affect the brightness. There you go. Uh. Yeah, I think it's. An, Opioid uh, analgesic, not a uh, narcotic medication. Withdrawal symptoms will include irritability, restlessness, shaking, sleeplessness. Uh, you just won't really get to sleep. Restless leg syndrome. That's uh, RLS. You. That's just normal for 
any opiate, but any, you're not going to get it off codeine really, but any proper opiate, I don't class uh, codeine as a proper opiate, I class morphine and oxycodone as proper opiates, dihydrocodone is an opiate, I'll, I'll give you that, it is, it is at least two times stronger than codeine, and it is a good drug, I, I find that dihydrocodone does help quite a lot of, with my pain, but no longer am I on that, I'm on morphine now, because the dihydrocodone did stop working, because I built up a tolerance, it's, it's the reason I'm making this video, so to tell you that it's very difficult not to get a tolerance on, on narcotics, if the only way you won't is by taking it every other day, or every two or three, three, four days, what I do is take it every day, so I have a tolerance to it, and tolerance is not good because it makes it the drug not work as well as it did before you had the tolerance, so yeah, basically that is it, I've summed it up with, with the last bit, and I'm just going to go and have something to drink. And thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like, rate, and comment below if you have any questions about morphine. I can't remember if it's an opioid agonist or an opiate agonist. I, can't, I can never remember what, and what one's an opioid and what one's an opiate. But it's, it's all petty stuff like that, I, I can't remember. Anyway, I'll go now, so thanks for watching and have a nice day. Goodbye, for now.